I recently updated my website and I didn't use Squarespace or WordPress, which are probably the two most common solutions for websites. And I did it through a static site and did it through a CDN. So I have less than one second full load times on my website. Yeah, that's possible. A lot of people are like, well, do you have any images? I have a lot of images, more than 20 on my load screen. And it is an extremely fast and efficient website. And a lot of people are like, why doesn't everyone do this? And I'll, I'll tackle that. But more so, I want to talk about why people use Squarespace, why people use WordPress, and a little bit of spoiler here, it's because they know it. It's not because it's the best solution. But there's a time and place for both these that I do want to talk about. So let's get on the desktop and talk about it. So let's go ahead and start with Drew Gooden's website. He's a YouTuber, love him to death. And honestly, this is not a, a shout or, or to take any YouTuber down for recommending Squarespace. Heck, I'd recommend Squarespace for a certain person. It just depends on the person. I'm not going to say it's the end-all, be-all of websites. Pictureofhotdog.com is about as bland and as simple as you can get. I know it was made in Squarespace. I pulled it directly from Drew. Uh, and it's amazing. He has like a little store and uh, just the basic stuff. Yeah, it it's it's an awesome website. I highly recommend you check out pictureofhotdog.com. But needless to say, I ran a performance report because I wanted to see, hey, what does an extremely bland website with just one picture on it using Squareplace or Squarespace do? And as we see here, scores pretty good. A's across the board, 95% on the structure, full paint uh, or, or large paintful uh, load at 1.2, full load uh, around 1.4 seconds. Not bad. And layout shifts perfect. So to be expected with a one image website. But I at least wanted to start here with Squarespace and then move on to someone that actually uses it to actually do e-commerce and other things. And for this, I'm going to hit another YouTuber that I love, and that's Peter McKinnon. He does a lot of photography stuff. He has his, like, his own shops for LUTs and on sound effects and a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, which is great. But when we look at his website store, you can see it is starting to drop quite a bit. Some of this is mostly network payloads and some of his images aren't well optimized which you can kind of see like his logo is a little bit jagged a little overly compressed and the images themselves still are nice it's a very aesthetic aesthetically pleasing website both squarespace i mean yes they're a little bit canned and usually you can tell it's a squarespace website but they are beautiful websites and i think anybody can set them up that's the appeal to it is for those that don't know and don't want to have like a team managing a website squarespace is actually not bad in this realm it's just not great either. So that's kind of where I'm at with Squarespace. I wanted to start out with that and just kind of say, hey, here's this out of box solution. You pay them about $20 a month and you get a website with a store and it's really easy. I mean, that's that's not a bad solution. But looking at Peter's website, full load time around nine seconds. Ow. Ugh. Ouch, that, that's brutal. Uh, I think a lot of times if someone was finding him in search, which nobody really finds Peter in search because they're coming from YouTube, it doesn't really matter in his instance. It works for what he uses it for. So for his case, Squarespace is just fine. Let's move on to WordPress, probably the most popular solution. It's free. You can download it. You can put it on any server. You could host it in your own VPS. There's a lot of different ways to attack attach WordPress and it can be as good as bad as you are capable. It also gives you a ton of freedom. So WordPress, a lot of techs end up using this. And for me, I hate WordPress with a passion. I literally think it should die. I, <laughs> I don't see a point in using it. It's slow. It's cumbersome. There's security flaws. There's a lot of problems with WordPress and I can easily do this in just a couple instances. Uh, let's start with the best WordPress. So I'm just going to go best WordPress sites of 2022. Obama.org is the first one. Uh, basic image layout, some other stuff here. It does look like they did lock down stuff. Like if you go to like admin, you don't actually get redirected to the admin page. Sometimes this is actually WP admin and people leave that open to get exploited. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's been disabled. So Props to that team for actually doing it properly. A lot of times you can actually just brute force into WordPress websites because WP admins 
wide open to the world and you can easily load into it. Uh, but as far as scores go, you can see performance wise, not great. Fully load time about six seconds. Uh, not awful. Pretty well optimized when it comes to words and press site. I've seen far worse than this but it's still not a great one. I would even give Squarespace, Wix, and those types of builders websites an edge on WordPress websites on almost every instance. Now, you can make WordPress work, but I've seen nine times out of 10, I would say WordPress is set up incorrectly and it's just awful. So, that brings us to the next WordPress website, Angry Birds. This is kind of funny, I was pulling it up last night and it didn't even load for me. But luckily, they did get their website working again. I don't know what the issue was there. And it is obviously another one that just performs like a dog, probably because of the intense graphics on the screen. So I'm not going to really hold this one back. But you can see WordPress a lot of times have some other ones. I was trying to pull up some other ones from our, our WordPress list, like uh, 99U. We could actually go ahead, pull it up. You can see that one loads just fine from adobe.com. Let's let's run a little report on it. So this is a base Adobe website. I anticipate this doing pretty well. There's not much going on. We have a pretty much stock theme with just a couple little images and full load times around four seconds, which is not bad. Uh, and overall, it felt a lot better than many other websites. So this is right here is a pretty well optimized WordPress website. Uh, but again, I'm not very impressed with this entire structure. So let's move on to, you know, some other things. And, and actually looking through here, you go to like creative ad awards. I was going to pull it up, but apparently they're having some MySQL issues. <laughs> So whoever's hosting that one, uh, I need, I, I guess I should probably contact them and be like, hey, bro, you need to learn how to set up a LAMP stack and interface with WordPress properly. <laughs> because apparently their website was working and now it's not. Uh, which WordPress, you run into this and you also run into a lot of security problems because it is probably the most exploited. Nah, it is definitely the most exploited out of pretty much anything out there. Uh, let's move on to my website, which I've done. I've switched back to a static site, and I did was using a different CMS from Squarespace, and I still am uh, for cttstore.com. I've switched that to basically be exclusively for that CMS, which is a lot like Squarespace, uh, which I'll, I'll explain that solution after this. So for my static site here, this is pretty darn fun and amazing because I can do some really crazy load times. I'm under a second, full load time, 777 milliseconds. So less than one second. Uh, and the first paint is at 400 milliseconds. Pretty darn great. What this isn't great at, and this is totally my bad because as I design this from a regular stock theme and I kind of mess around with things, I messed out with my layout shift, which is not good. Layout shift's important because as the site loads, it might shift you down. Now, it being a 700 millisecond time, typically people aren't going to just start to browse it in that 300 millisecond time from the first paint to the full load. So, I mean, it's not something I'm really worried about with such an efficient and fast site, but it's something I still will probably fix because there's some design things I can do in the back end to make sure it doesn't shift around at all. So having layout shifts, not a good thing, an area I could work on. Other things is like waterfalls. If you do do this on your site, you're like, where am I losing all my load time? And you can kind of see I'm pulling like from a Google API here that's costing me 300 milliseconds. If I wasn't, I probably could easily cut this down to about 300 or 400 milliseconds. But honestly, anything less than a second is just stellar. So that's where my website's just killing it. And if we go into the download, the cttstore.com, uh, this actually has all my digital downloads for my toolbox, like an offline executable, uh, images, so you could load this up in a VM. If you have a Raspberry Pi made like its own little distro spin, a lot of cool things through cttstore.com that I like. And I did this through a service called Podia because they offered a ton of stuff. I could do full on newsletters, uh, which I have around 3000 members to my monthly newsletter. But this one right here, when it comes to cttstore.com, 
I am doing pretty good with this using a content management system. This isn't the perfect solution. It's very much in the same realm of, I say, a Squarespace. And if Squarespace suits your needs, like I think it has an email and it has a, a digital download store kind of that you can set up, that works. But Podi offers a little bit more in like course generation and some other things I really kind of wanted to dive in in the future. So that's kind of why I used it as my platform. I would lump it in with Squarespace though, and I think they're both equally good for that. But I wouldn't use it as my main site just because I'm more concerned about driving search traffic, which I alluded to at the very beginning. If we look at the search traffic, you can see as I switched completely to Podia, just to try it out, just to see, hey, if I switched everything from a static site to a regular site, what happens? And what I saw was a lot of my search traffic started to go down because there was no sitemap that was being generated and submitted, which should have been. And there's some other issues where a lot of these baked in solutions, they might not do the best when it comes to search and submitting and, and keeping up with your searches. Where WordPress wouldn't run into this problem, it has plenty of good site sitemap generators. A static site is obviously best because you can actually do page experience, mobile usability. Now, I just resubmitted all this today, so I'm still waiting for it to, to crawl it, which will happen over the course of the next month. This doesn't happen instantaneous. And then these URLs will pull back into my coverage. So I'll have, instead of 74, I'll have a 282 or whatever it was, uh, where this, you can see over the past month has just slowly come down because it's not generated from a sitemap and Google doesn't know to crawl it except to manually go out and look at it. So it's just indexed regularly, not submitted from a site sitemap, which isn't good. So that's a, one downside that I saw from at least Podia's experience. Maybe, maybe Squarespace does a little bit better job here, but I can't speak to that because I haven't used them for an extended period of time. But something to keep an eye on. Get in your Google search contents console, especially if you're looking for outside traffic. So I don't ever want to rely 100% on YouTube, even though YouTube's pretty much Google. It's the search engine behind Google. And Google uses like, I think, 94 and 5% of all searches on the internet come from Google. And that is really where I wanted to make sure I was getting traffic and having a fast static site is amazing. So if you're interested in this, I did an entire video on setting up static sites with Netlify and using Hugo to generate them. Uh, I do this all from basically, I, you can do it from terminal or uh, probably easiest is probably VS code. Most people know how to do that, where I would go in here, uh, launch this, and then I can kind of modify my site in real time. So let's say I have terminal, I go new terminal, and then I type Hugo server, it'll build this site. And then I can kind of change things as I go. So if I do localhost, pull this up, this is the site. So let's say I wanted to change 30 days in Chrome OS to something different, I could actually come over to the 30 days in Chrome OS. And let's say I wanted to change the title to be three days in Chrome OS. Uh, I can come right back here and it immediately updates in real time. So you can modify the site in real time all using Markdown, which I'm a junkie when it comes to terminal and Markdown. So this is way faster than having to do some graphic editor on the web. That stuff slows me down and I wanted to make more guides and I just can't do it with the online editor. It's just too slow. And I'm, I'm a one-man shop, and I need to be powering through these guides. And I just found myself not making the guides when I had that web editor. So my big thing was, one, scoring higher in search and having better search results and more speed. But also because of how I'm wired and I like Markdown, it just makes much more sense to do it this way where I can just do a git push afterwards. But this is why I don't use WordPress or Squarespace. They're just not for me, but I understand some people will use them. It's just, they're not going to be, they're not going to net the best result for someone really gearing for Google search. And if you are, you probably should start looking into the static sites because how this works is it generates just static sites, meaning no dynamic content and it loads incredibly fast because of that. But on top of all that, it gets distributed through Netlify CDN. And this CDN means no matter where you're at in the world, it's going to be a second load time. It's going to be instantaneous. It's going to be fantastic. It's great. Uh, and that's, that's 
awesome. So that that's great. Now, where my room for improvement is probably Podia. I would say Podia can be a little bit on the slower side or right in there with the Squarespace and things. Maybe if someday I develop stores or it evolves because the future looks pretty bright. When we look at uh, a lot of the things, there's other alternatives. Like I said, there's Podia as an alternative, but WordPress to static sites. A lot of WordPress people already clicked off and said dislike, but a lot of WordPress, they're starting to become services that are turning WordPress sites to static sites so you can take advantage of this and still have your CMS or your content management system. So these are what, what's going on. I want you to think about all this stuff. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.